In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a double color exposure in Photoshop. And this is the third type of these that I'm doing. The other two are linked in the description below. All right, so the first thing you need is two images that are thematically linked. So I just have two dancers right here. And then what I would suggest is look at these percentages up here. So 25% and 33.3%. I would pick the smaller number first and we're gonna cut this one out and bring it over to the other image. So to do that, make sure you're clicked on your background layer and then go to the fourth tool down. One, two, three, four, right click if you don't see it. We're gonna to go to quick selection tool right here and then just use this select subject up at the top right here. Now, when you do this, Photoshop's gonna do a good job of kind of cutting it out or like outlining it with the dotted ants here. But if you have a section, let's say like this, that's, you know, well, that that's an extreme one that's like jutting out that you don't want as part of your selection, then just go to the minus up here and paint that away. So I'm just gonna paint it in here till it's back to just the selection around him. And then like this, if you have a part that's missing from your selection, then just go to plus and paint it back into what you need. And then once you have your selection the way that you want, oh, I got another part right there that's missing. When you have the selection the way that you want, then just go up to select and mask. And I'm not gonna do anything fancy in here. I just like to smooth it out a bit feather it just a touch, maybe bring my, shift my edge back to the left a little bit, and then just output to change this to layer mask and click OK. Now for this effect, you don't have to be perfect with your selection. So as long as it's pretty good, then you're good to go. All right, so then now you're gonna go over to your move tool up here. You're gonna click on your image layer here so you can move it around, keep the click down drag it over to the other tab for the other one and still have it click down, drag it in and then let go. And it should be bigger than your other image because you know this is 25%, that means it's only 25% of its full size, so it's actually gonna be a bigger image. Okay, once you drag that in, just click on the eyeball to hide it for now and then click on your other layer and do the exact same thing to cut this one out as well. So quick selection tool, select subject, pay attention to your selection, see if there's anything that's missing or that's added that you don't want. So I need to add in a little bit more of the boot shoe right here. I added too much, take some of it away. And I think that looks pretty good. Select and mask, smooth it out a bit, feather it a touch, shift the edge back, output to layer mask and okay. Now, if we look over here at our two masks, we can see that obviously whatever's white is whatever is left for our image and whatever is black is what we covered up or what looks like it's erased. So if you have any other things that you need to touch up, like I'll zoom in here. See, I have this little part of the dress here, the skirt, the, oh, I guess it's a shirt, flannel shirt that's missing. Then you click on the mask and you're gonna go over here to your brush tool change the size and hardness to make it appropriate. So in this case, I'm gonna make it a fairly hard brush like there, you know, 73, something like that. And then I'm just going to use white. So if you see here, white is what we have. So I'm gonna use a white brush to paint it back in. Now, if it doesn't paint in, check your opacity and flow as well. So mine's at 50%, I gotta crank that back up. And now I can paint that part of the shirt back in. If you have anything that's extra like this, like a chunk like that, you can also use flick this to black and use a black brush to what looks like a race, but you're just covering it up with the mask like this. All right, so once you have both of your selections made, like your masks on, then just bring this other guy back. And then on your top layer, like the bigger image, click on it, not on the mask, on the actual thumbnail and go Control T so we can resize it. Now, just make sure this chain is clicked up here. Don't have it unclicked like that, click it like this, so that when we change it, it'll keep the aspect ratio and just kind of shrink the other one down so they kind of match and then put them into place. So for now, I'm just gonna put him maybe right there and click check when you're good. For the background, you actually need a fairly dark color for this effect to work easier and to look better. So for now, I'm just gonna go over here to this little half circle thing, click on it. I'm gonna go up to solid color and I'm gonna pick a just really dark, maybe 
kind of blue, maybe something like that. I'm gonna bring it a little more neutral over here and I'm gonna click okay and then bring it down so it's below the other two. So now these two are on top of that color fill layer. Okay, and then the rest is actually pretty simple. So we're gonna go to one of the layers. Uh, I'm gonna actually start with this one, the bottom one. I'm gonna double click to the right over here, which brings up the layer style menu. And all I'm gonna do is under advanced blending, I'm just gonna unclick the G and the B so that she is red and click okay. And then for him, I'm gonna double click over here and I'm actually gonna unclick two more of these. So in my other tutorials, I said just unclick red so that you keep the other two that is kind of opposite to her. But for this one, I'm gonna unclick two different ones so that we have this overlap and we have a third kind of prominent color in the middle. So we'll have red, green, and then yellow. But I'm gonna change their colors as well. So just pick one or the other. So if I tried this one, that one doesn't stand out as much. You can pick that one too, because then we have purple in the middle. It doesn't matter, we can adjust it later. But I'm gonna pick the green and go from there and click OK. At this point, all we really have left to do is adjust our colors if you don't want the colors that exist already. So to do that, I'm going to go to this little half circle, click on it and add selective color this time. And all you're going to do is mess around with these sliders, but make sure you select the right colors. So I'm going to pick reds to mess with her. And then you're just going to slide these along and the different combination of what you apply here is going to create different colors. So if I slide this cyan kind of back here that'll adjust it different than if I slide it to the right. So if I'm going to move it back and then if I take this uh, the magenta one and move it now I can create that combo creates like yellow or like orange but I'm going to bring that one back and I'm going to slide the yellow back over and that's actually going to the combo of these two this way will create that kind of pink that we get there. So just play around with your sliders until you can get the color that you want. All right, so then to mess with him, we have to go to greens and in greens, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna just kind of play around with these sliders until I get kind of the look that I want. I'm gonna just mess with them to test first. So I really only want maybe something like that. So I'm gonna get that yellow going and maybe add a little bit of magenta and a punch of cyan right there and then maybe kind of bring this back a little bit to make him kind of a little bit brighter. Okay, and then there's the middle here. So whatever third color shows up here, you can also mess with that. So I'm gonna to go to yellows and you can mess around with that if you want. So if you slide these along, you'll be able to adjust that. I'm just gonna take some of the like pinky red that kind of shows up in there. I'm gonna bring that back to kind of tone it down a bit to see more yellow through. And let's see what this one does maybe bring that to like there and yeah, bring this, just keep this around the middle somewhere. The last thing is gonna be coming back to the background or you wanna try some other colors, then just go back to your color fill layer, double click and you can maneuver this around. So if you notice here, when I make this brighter, it looks like that looks okay, I guess. Like it's very muted. So if that's what you wanted, if you, you wanted kind of that look, then then go with that. I just think the worst ones for these are really like punchy, poppy colors because then it just kind of takes away from the effect. So I would stay away from stuff along this kind of edge over here. I like to stay kind of in the middle and I tend to drift towards like darker backgrounds. So I'm going to stay kind of where I was, maybe bring it up just a little bit. And then I will go to my colors and I'll slide this along to kind of see what I think looks best. So as I'm sliding this, I actually think that for me, I really like that, the kind of purple in there. I think that looked best for this image. And then I'm gonna click okay. And if you want just one more kind of layer of thing to test out, then we can try a gradient in the background as well. So I'm gonna click this little box with the plus to make a blank layer. I'm gonna to go to my gradient tool over here. And when you click on this little slider thing here, this little, the little gradient, then this gradient editor comes up my suggestion is just click on this box on this side and then have your color picker and click on your background. Go to this one, do the exact same thing. So now we have this, just a solid color for our gradient and then go back to this box, click on this color box now this time 
and just slide it up a bit to make it a little bit brighter. So probably around a little bit lighter, maybe around there. You can try it. You can come back to it and change it if you don't like it. So I'm going to click OK and OK. And then with the gradient, you can decide whether you want a radial gradient or this one. Like these are probably the two best for this. And I'm going to stick with the radial one, click in the middle and kind of drag out. And you'll see that it'll create this like a little bit of a haze like in the middle. If I go too far, then you can see it gets like really bright like that. Me personally, I just like a little bit of a kind of a glow back there, maybe even you know, a little bit more over to that side or, you know, kind of in the middle of both of them, something like that. You know what? I lied. There's actually a couple more things we can do to enhance our colors as well. So click on your top layer, like your top image, go down here to adjustment layers and add a black and white. Do the same thing on the other layer, your one underneath. So go here and black and white. And then on each of them, just click on it and click this little thing right here. That's a clipping mask then go to this one and create a clipping mask. All that's gonna do is make sure that the black and white adjustment layer is only impacting the layer below it. So this one will impact the girl here and this black and white adjustment layer will impact the guy. And then all you're doing is same thing. You're gonna click on the logo side of it here and mess with the sliders. And you'll see that each of them will do a kind of a different thing. Or maybe some of them don't. Some of them don't do anything, some of them will. So I'm gonna slide this to kind of brighten his face up. I'm going to, you know, same kind of thing. I'm going to kind of just brighten up a few things in here. Maybe this one I'll keep down a little bit for some contrast. The green doesn't really do much. Cyan's, I'm going to punch that up a bit. The blues, yeah, I want more kind of yellow in here. So I'm going to pump that one up a little bit more than the others. And magenta does kind of the same thing, just a little bit in here. So I'll punch that one up. Then I'll go to the other black and white, and that's gonna be for her. I'm gonna crank this up a little bit to make the pink kind of pop a little bit more. And maybe the same thing with yellow. This one, green does nothing, cyan's does nothing, blue does nothing, magenta does nothing. Okay, so once you have that, once you've kind of tweaked your colors a little bit with black and white, uh, then I would suggest doing one more thing to just kind of make sure that you got the image that you want. So I click on the very bottom layer, scroll up, hold shift, click on the very top layer, then go control J to make a copy of everything, control E to collapse them all together like this. Then go over here to the right of it, right click on it and convert to a smart object up to filter and down to camera raw filter. So in here, it's got kind of all the main adjustments that you can do to your image. So I'm just gonna scroll up here under basic and I'm just gonna kind of stay up here. Now, I'm not necessarily going to make this the way that I want it. I'm just gonna quickly go through a few things that you might want to test. So vibrance and saturation down here, obviously this is how you can punch up your colors even more. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of vibrance. I'm gonna leave saturation alone. Uh, texture and clarity. So if you slide this one this way, you can get kind of a hazy kind of blurry look to it and if you go to the right you're going to have to add a lot more detail into it so i'm just going to punch up the clarity a little bit to add some detail there but i'm also going to move texture back a little bit to add a little bit of blur back into it then up here you got kind of your normal one so exposure contrast highlights and stuff so i'm just going to do an exaggerated edit here so i'm going to kind of bring my highlights down bring the contrast up and make the whole image just kind of pop with colors uh, more than it was before. So you can play around with these, get the look that you want, and then click OK, and you'll see it'll boom, it'll adjust right there. If you need to go back, that's why we made it into a smart object, so that you can double click on this right here. If you need to go back in and adjust them now that you've seen the image kind of bigger and back on your canvas. So I'm going to cancel, and that's it. That's how you make a, another version of a double color exposure in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.